This was a fantastic program. A main character, who other from a collection of artifacts, possesses no real powers yet manages to become the world's foremost explorer. The multitude of worshippers who revere both the surface he traverses and his omitted words, as they are all intertwined with his grand scheme. Apparently he's the quiet, powerful kind. In any case, I had a great time watching the program. I was relieved to find that the missing gang had been located, either accidentally or as part of a larger plot. Basically, Craig Kamisama has been letting his team go off for a long time due to his own poor decisions and those of his teammates, but he has done nothing to stop it because he has never stood up to them. These demonic teammates of Cry told Tino how awesome Cry is, and now I get it. Tino is just a little girl. Once Liz arrived, I couldn't help but burst into laughter. As the rest of them go, oh no, the ghost is here. Kai just thinks, oh my, what is Liz doing here? It's really cute. Finally, Tino, who is obviously upset, says, oh my god, the master is here. Whoa, Tino. Liz has ripped the girl to shreds. And seriously, is is taking a lot of heat from her coat. Liz isn't exactly a master in that department, especially under those conditions. This episode solidified my hate for Liz, the first time we encounter her outside of memories. The moment in which she scolds and rants at Tino was not humorous or cute. Rather, it was harsh, unnecessary, and upsetting to witness. She gave the impression of being an aggressive, violent bitch. While we're talking about it, Cry deserves a lot of credit for doing nothing as Liz verbally abused Tino and nearly killed Gilbert. Even when he's freaking out on the inside, Kai is the queen of maintaining a composed expression. Thus, Kai was amassing any and all artifacts he could find, regardless of their usefulness. Her training with that artifact gave Liz superhuman strength, but it also altered her perception of space. Since Luke was practicing with the supposedly cursed sword that gave him the urge to murder everyone, I suppose he was also little insane. Oh, so Liz's level is just six. So one's reputation, rather than their actual talent, determines their rank. The use of flashbacks to introduce the rookie grievers in a chili. Opening is a smart framing device that helps flesh out their history and reputation while keeping the focus on the newcomers and Cry's interactions with them. On the surface, it seems similar to One Room Yuasha, a story about heroes who, 10 years after their last showdown, continue to live in the shadow of their achievements while still having the power to shake the world. The show uses frequent flashbacks to flesh out the backstory, and these themes are relevant to the story of the current episode. Within the initial few seconds, the sword that was cursed was displayed. Their demonstration of how easily the wicked thing with the skull mask defeated everyone without killing threw me right into their trap. My first assumption was that he would serve as Grieving Soul's sword master. However, following that, things changed drastically. It was then shown that he was little more than a typical villain. It appears that Cry is an awkward strategist. A lot of his actions turn out to be foolish, but he manages to be clever in the end. Also, regardless of how much he knows or doesn't know, his leadership skills are virtually unrivaled, regardless of how physically weak he is compared to the rest of the gang. He considers his teammates while making decisions and he prioritizes his own needs before those of the team. In an ideal world, this fresh squad that emerged from White Wolf's lair would stay together and take on further missions. I feel a strong bond to cry at times. People put their faith in things without question. Despite his feelings of powerlessness, Cry knows that he cannot put the entire crew in jeopardy by turning around and doing it himself. It was pure luck that led to this happy ending. He is very fortunate. It could be a positive thing that people obey orders without question, but I feel like a lot of people these days prefer to just listen to what other people have to say. Even if it is a mistake, at least they avoid making that kind of mistake. Cry keeps artifacts, right? Of course. Nonetheless, he did the Grievers proud by telling them about it, regardless of the consequences, such as Luke nearly killing everyone with a cursed sword and Liz being hit by a space ring. It was still worth it. I now understand Tino's motivation for throwing butt and thigh blows. The celebration is now being led by Cry. I didn't choose it. Since Tino is under the impression that he is in control and everyone else is merely following his lead, he continues to act as though he is completely lost. When he looks across at Tino, they turn their heads as if he were staring at something else. 
In reality, all he wants is to make sure Tino isn't angry with him. But Tino's god Cry is clearly still educating them, so even if he's unintentionally guiding them away from the exit, he won't confirm their destination. To avoid admitting he was ignorant, and they generally just aimlessly wander. It's all part of the plan. They even tracked down the hunters Cry hadn't quite forgotten about, which was their original mission. Plus, it demonstrated that purchasing those limitless chocolate bags was a wise decision. Cray was only seeking an opportunity to reassert his dominance over Tino and his thighs, wasn't he? It's hard to hold him responsible. Even while the cave specters and machine gun wielding wolves appear menacing, the true terror lurking within is Liz Smart. This pharaoh's AI woman is as quick as she is skilled in battle, and she is just as unpredictable as she is barely dressed. We can see where Tino gets her style ideas. She is unconcerned about danger and only wants to avoid looking foolish in Cry's presence. Tino shares her concern. I feel bad for Tino. She was verbally abused and talked down to by her prior master because she was not on the same level as him and couldn't manage the situation without Cry. No wonder he was utterly afraid when Liz showed there. Tino breaks down in tears since he is clearly not strong enough to compete with Liz and Cry, even if he is doing his best. She is unworthy of this. On top of that, Gilbert nearly loses his life while trying to halt the assault. Liz possesses unparalleled speed and a lethal combination of fists and legs that renders firearms obsolete. Cry is the only person she is genuinely friendly with. He treats her like an old pal from childhood, like Thousand Sword Luke. The other grievers are aiming for this level. The fact that Gilbert's armor shows signs of damage from Liz's attack is adorable. My best to you as you strive to reach her level, Cry totally meant for the grievers' mask be an accident. The team proceeded with the idea that the eye holes were meant to protect them from blinding blows and teach them to fight without sight instead of the actual purpose. And ever since then, their distinctive masks have remained popular. A satchel designed just to handle magical artifacts and chocolates. And Cry doesn't merely gather relics. He gathers cursed things and relics that can hurt the user. According to what we can tell, Liz and Luke augmented their strength by training with those objects. I find it amusing how everyone is following Cry and thinking the same thing every time he turns around, that he must have felt something. Cry's assumption that Tino despises him, simply because he looks away is the funniest part. They found the lost party at the end of Cry's traveling, which came as no surprise to anyone. As it turns out, the massive wolves aren't the main issue. Their complaint is with this masked dude who kicked them in the behind. Now we've met another dual soul, and let me tell you, she's terrifying. I can see why Tino is terrified of her. Even I felt a bit uncomfortable when Liz scolded Tino. She has to calm down. It was a relief that Liz could let her frustrations out on the Phantom. It was far from becoming a confrontation. There was just one side in the carnage. It appears that Cry is the only one who can truly soothe Liz. She is simply too much. Hopefully, the rest of the group isn't quite as dramatic as she is.